Today, we are going to be talking about the black sheep effect, which is something, it's an effect that happens to websites that completely can block you from ranking. And when I say can completely block you, I truly mean this. This is something, it's not like one of those ranking factors where if you don't have the perfect backlinks, you can still rank. Or if you don't have the perfect on-site optimization, you can still rank. But if you are a quote unquote black sheep, it will single-handedly hold you back from ranking. And I see this a lot in consultations. I do one-on-one -on -one consultations from time to time. I audit websites all the time for purchase. And I see this come up a lot. And most people, when they're in a black sheep situation, they just simply don't know they're experiencing it, which sucks is because people are typically spending a lot of time fixing things that don't matter. So going out and dropping 500 bucks on a speed optimization, or even worse, building more links when that is actually contributing to the problem. So I'm super happy to be talking about this and hopefully I resolve issues for anyone who's experiencing the black sheep, or if you are building links to a website or doing any kind of SEO, how I can help you avoid getting in this situation, getting blindsided. So in case you haven't been on one of my webinars before, I like to do things very actionable. So there's, if there is any fluff, go ahead and comment and just say, hey, man, you need to get a little bit more actionable, a little bit more straightforward. But I try to eliminate all fluff. I want to get straight to the point, just get you action, 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 so you can fix whatever's going on with your website. So that's, that's my main goal. And by the end, I hope that you should know how to deal with this stuff and get your site unstuck if you happen to be black sheep. And definitely stick around for the whole webinar. After we dig into the main black sheep effect, I'm going to highlight three other versions of the black sheep that show up in other parts of SEO and, of course, how to deal with them. And we also have a great freebie for you guys towards the middle of the webinar that you don't want to pass up. Every time we do one of these webinars as a token of my gratitude for you spending your time with me, we offer a free backlink consultation, 100% free. So just make sure to sign up for that. And then... There's always questions. There's always very good questions. If you have any questions, go ahead and use the comment box, and then I'll answer them all at the end. So make sure to stick around for that as well. So the goals for this webinar is, first, I want to introduce you to this SEO mistake called the black sheep effect that can single-handedly hold you back from ranking, and I truly mean that, and give you a framework for avoiding the black sheep effect in the future, so making sure you never get hit by it again. And then how to help you adjust your SEO game to never get blindsided by other black sheep. Like I mentioned, black sheep is just a general concept. There's one of them that shows up a lot, but there's other forms of it that can get you as well. So how I'm going to accomplish this, this is my agenda for the day. We'll first discuss what is the black sheep effect. We'll just define it, how to avoid it entirely, and then how to fix your site if you already have it. because That's a little bit different than the avoidance path. And then again, we're going to do the free stuff. We're going to give you a free backlink analysis if you're interested in that. And then show you three other black sheep that you should definitely watch out for because they can also hold you back as well. And then as promised, we're open for Q&A. I've cleared out about half an hour of my time for if you have any questions, whether they're regarding black sheep, link building, on-site optimization, whatever you have, scaling, just let me know what you have in the, in the comment box and I'll get to it. Let's get straight into it. What is the black sheep effect? The discovery of the black sheep, I figured this out in 2017, and it was discovered via observation, just trying to pick apart why I had web pages on one website where I'd have other web pages that rank completely fine, but some web pages completely would not rank at all. So I, I reverse engineered and really dug into it and saw what was, what was the anomaly here. And then we solved it with single variable testing. And I actually wrote a post a long, long time ago called The Black Sheep Effect in 2017 about, about this whole phenomenon. And we're going to expand on it in this webinar right now. So The Black Sheep Effect, the observation was we had URLs that were not ranking despite how many links were sent. So once we started digging into what was going on in page one, so I'm on the bottom of page one, I'm ranked number 10. What's different from me than the people at the top of page one? What am I doing wrong? What we found is that, well, first off, this, this is also back in the glory days when links solved everything. When links, when you could just have the worst piece of content on the internet and send some powerful links to it, it's going to rank. So this was super out of left field at the time. So the conclusion was we had sent too many referring domains to our URLs. So we were overlinking, we were overcooking the URLs that we were trying to rank. And it simply, it was getting stuck. We were 
we were looking like a black sheep. We were not blending in with page one. And that, that was the issue. It was in comparison to the other URLs of page one. We weren't sending too many links just in general. Like you can look at a lot of web pages on the internet that can have a lot of links, but it's in comparison to the other URLs on page one that's the problem. So does this still exist today? Yeah, I just got this DM randomly um, not too long ago that just says, um, I want to ask a question I can't find the answer to. I search in Google Beard Growth Kit Amazon. First URL is four backlinks. My product is on position three with 3,500 backlinks. Why a URL with fewer backlinks ranks higher than mine that has good quality backlinks and the right keywords? Well, I know there could be a lot of side topics to this. Like, what's up with your 3,500 backlinks? Are they terrible? What's up with the authority of the website in position number one, the overall domain authority? And we'll discuss all this stuff, but you can see that people are still having problems with it right now. Let's show you an example of this out in the wild. So if we look at the keyword best fat burners, number one, we have this website, Far Institute. And we can see here, it has a, the amount of referring domains is 20. Amazon's number two with 85 referring domains. And then we look at three, four, and five, they have 62 referring domains, 15 and 76 respectively. Let's move to the bottom of page one, 21, 28, 56, and 25. And if we put these in a table, we can see here positions one through nine. For some reason, the SERP only has nine organic listings on page one. Thanks, Google. But you can see that the RD here, the amount of referring domains, it caps off at 85 with the person in position number two, but no one seems to go over 100, right? Let's look at page two, right? So we have Healthline, 856, 760, 159, 139. Let's put this next to each other. Look at the difference between page one and page two. So we have a, a significantly more RD on, on page two. And we're going to get into thoughts about causation correlation. It could just mean that the, all the, the web pages on page one have superior content, or maybe they have better authority. We'll address that in a bit. So let's talk about what is correlational SEO. Correlational SEO is an SEO school of thought. It's very, very widespread these days. This is the school of thought that I use to rank my websites. And it's based on, if you have the question, how do I get to page one? The answer to get there is already written on page one. If you want to figure out how to rank for a given keyword, the blueprint to it is already there. You can reverse engineer the sites and positions one, two, and three to figure out what they did to get to that position. It's kind of like, I use the analogy, it's like you're playing poker with your competitors, but you can see their hand. You can see all their cards. And Kyle Roof, also really into correlational SEO, he calls it, the answer is hiding in plain sight. I like that one as well. So the sites that blend in with page one do well. Sites that don't blend in are basically fighting a losing war. You're, you're going in an uphill. You're trying to rank uphill, right? And there's a lot of tools that completely leverage this whole concept and reverse engineer what's going on page one to give you a blueprint on how to go forward, like Surfer, Pop, and Quora. And they're getting great results for their customers. So the black sheep is literally the opposite of correlational SEO. It's basically throwing this whole idea of correlational SEO in the trash can and saying, I'm not only not going to blend in with page one, I'm going to be completely different. Of course, you can't rank when Google is basically doesn't know how to rank a web page for the keyword best fat burners, right? Let's use that one for example. Google doesn't actually know. It's not this omnipotent a general AI that can ingest or run a simulation to ingest fat burners and actually figure this out. They find the answer by looking at who's already ranking on page one and looking at the ranking signals and seeing who's answering that query the best. So they only know the answer on page one anyway. So we need to configure our SEO strategy to be how Google ranks websites as well. So how to find the black sheep limit? It's quite simple, really easy. You need a SERP overlay tool. The tool that I was using before that you saw in the screenshots was Ahrefs Toolbar. I use it simply because it's, I have an Ahrefs subscription, it's quick, and I use Ahrefs metrics to figure out RD. I like its crawler and I like how many backlinks it can pick up. Some alternatives is SERPWorks. SERPWorks is a, is a paid one, pretty solid. It's pretty cheap too. It's, it's one of the better SERP overlay tools because it's very quick. It doesn't slow down your, your browsing experience. And then we have Mozbar. Mozbar is free, but just kind of clunky and slow. Maybe they've improved it. I haven't used it for years. 
And so what you want to do is you want to find the max referring domains on page one. What's the web page with the maximum amount of referring domains going to a ranking URL? And then add 10%, and that's your buffer. So it looks like this. Let's say in, from the cert before, best fat burners, we had position number two with 85. So to find the black sheep limit, basically what I do is I multiply that by 1.1, and I get 93.5. So I would know that I can't send more than 93 links to a URL. That's when I hit my black sheep limit. I give it a 10% buffer just because I've seen through experience and observation, you can overcook it and still rank. So let's talk about some of the counter arguments. Authority, some people might be thinking, well, this, the sites on page one simply had more domain authority. They had higher DR than the ones on page two. Well, let's take a look. Let's add a column for DR to this table here. And you can see here the DR on page two is nothing to shake a stick at. We're looking at 92s and 90s, right? They have higher DR than most web pages on page one. So let's toss that one out. Other counter arguments could be, you have better content on page one. Sure, that's definitely a possibility. Everyone on page one has better content than everyone on page two. But I think you remember on page two, the, at the top of page two is Healthline. They have pretty darn good content. I would say they probably have the best content when it comes to health type stuff. Maybe there's better technical SEO on page one. Maybe there's better whatever on page one. There's gonna be a million counter arguments. Well, just watch how you fix this. Let me just demonstrate how you fix this thing. So the answer to this all comes down to reverse siloing. If we have a site structure like this, we have our homepage, which is basically a portal. It's not trying to rank for any keywords. It's simply used to get the visitor to different pages on the website. So we have three different money pages on a very simple website. One is best protein powder, best elliptical machine, best fitness watch. And let's say we just hit the link limit for best protein powder. We, we, rever we reverse engineered and we looked at what is the black sheep limit for this particular keyword, and we've already hit that. So what do we do? You should be doing this anyways, but in this case, what you would want to do is you create a bunch of supporting content articles. They can be more monetized pages. They can be just informational supporting pages. It doesn't really matter. But in this example, th these are all coincidentally just three informational pages. Is whey protein safe? When should you take protein powder? Is pea protein vegan? And then what you're going to want to do is interlink these to your best protein powder page. And instead of sending more links to your best protein powder page, trying to brute force rank it higher, you would finesse it by sending links here instead. So let me show you some examples of this working on some of my websites. So this is our website right here. It's a DR41. And we sent 19 referring domains and we're in position one for this keyword. Look at who we're up against. We're up against a DR96 and a DR86. And how about this one? This is, we're in position number two. We're, again, our DR41. We're up against a DR94 and a 58. We have 10 RD, and the guy in position one has five RD, 11 has 11, R, or three has 11 RD. So we're under the limit for sure, and we're able to rank against these websites with more authority than we do. Here's another example. We're in position three right here, so RD9, and up against a DR91 and a 62. So you're able to take websites with less authority. You're not quite there at the authority level that the other guys are. And by sending links to the supporting pages, you get a huge boost out of it. And I'll explain why that happens. First, this has been working for a long time. This is screenshots of this working. This is ranking graph from 2015. Here's another one from 2017. And it still works today. So you can look at the timeline on the x-axis here. This still works today. And I'm going to talk about why this works. Well, Google still operates on an algorithm called PageRank. PageRank is why Google is Google. It's, it's why they edged out ahead of AOL search engine, Yahoo, whatever. All the other search engines just got blown away because Google put their faith into an algorithm called PageRank. And PageRank is basically a ranking signal based on backlinks. Sites with more backlinks rank higher, and sites with backlinks that themselves have links do even better. So if we took this and we assume that this node here was your website B or your web page B, it ha would have a page rank score of just hypothetical 38.4. It used to be on a, a 1 to 10 scale, but this is just for illustration. And so the best backlink it has is this page rank of 34.3 because it probably has a bunch of links going to it. So that's how PageRank works. So now, so the, the concept on how this works with reverse siloing is that 
your supporting pages aren't just supporting pages without any power behind them. You've already applied some link juice to them and they're ranking you up because of that page rank. The second reason this works is because topical relevance. If you have a fitness website, you just have one piece of content about protein powder. Google doesn't think you're an expert about protein powder. Anyone could do this right now. Like I can go to diggitymarketing.com and write an article about protein powder. They're just going to laugh at it. It doesn't matter if it's the best piece of content on the internet about protein powder. They're not going to rank me for it. But if you create a structure like this and you interlink and you establish topical relevance, this is always a superior situation than just being a single page about something. It's about covering a topic completely with multiple pages and then interlinking them very nicely together. And then when you have authority through the page rank algorithm, you combine that with relevance. That basically is the equation for SEO. This is on a quite simple terms. It's, it's content and backlinks and authority and relevance, and that gets you higher ranking. It's a simplistic way of looking at SEO, but that's why this works as well. And the main benefit of this is you avoid being the black sheep. You don't have any correlational SEO problems. You blend in with page one. You're not the weird guy, right? So we have some FAQ questions. Let's, let's address some questions. The first question is, what if you already have too many links going to the URL that you want to rank? Okay, you've already cooked that URL. You, you need to dig yourself out of the hole. So what I'm going to suggest is removing the links going to your target URL. You're going to need to do this you're simply going to be fighting an uphill battle. There's, there's nothing else you could do unless you want to build links to everyone else on page one in order to make you look more normal. That certainly wouldn't be efficient. And if you're super shysty about wanting to waste those links that you had built through outreach or however you built them, you could see about moving a few of them to your supporting content that are linking to your target URL, but do this in extreme moderation. It's it's a pretty weird signal to be able to change the targets of linking URLs to something else. And so if you want to do this, just do it a handful of times. Don't do it too much. Next FAQ question is, how should you build internal anchors from your supporting pages? So for the best protein powder page, I illustrated just three supporting pages. But I trust me, indeed, you're not going to rank for any kind of protein powder pages with just four total pages. You're going to have to write dozens and dozens to get any kind of traction. So how do you build internal anchors to a page that's receiving maybe 40 links from the supporting pages? So we tested this, we single variable tested this and we found that uh, we, we ran a couple different scenarios or a few different scenarios, one with 100% varied target anchor text. So what I mean by varied is they all had target keywords in them but they were never the same. So one might be top protein powders, favorite protein powders, a protein supplement, all super varied. So 100% tar target varied anchor text. Number two was 80% varied target and 20% miscellaneous. Miscellaneous meaning click here, read more, or something like that. And then we did a 50-50 split, 50 varied target, 50 miscellaneous. And we found the superior result was 100% varied target anchor text. It got the best result. The experimental pages that we applied this to outperformed the control by the highest degree. That said, it was only very, very marginally better of result than scenario number two with 80% varied target and 20% miscellaneous. So it's not the hugest increase. It's not the hugest impact. And so when I'm recommending which of these scenarios to go with, I sometimes recommend two. I often recommend two just because it can, it can save people out of making a mistake of accidentally sending too many exact match anchor texts over and over and over again, which will definitely hurt you. Okay, cool. Now that we understand what the black sheep effect is, it's time for me to give you guys some free stuff. This is uh, my appreciation for you guys spending your time with me. So every webinar we give this offer and it fills up really quick. If you're interested in this, I recommend minimizing your, or opening a new tab and just signing up for it. But what it is, it's a free backlink analysis that we're going to determine what you need to do to compete in your niche. And this time around, it's going to include black sheep checking and analysis and support on how to get it fixed for your web page. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is help you determine the link gap. What is the link gap? So let's say I'm trying to rank for the keyword best curling iron. I see we got rank and style number one, good housekeeping number two, birdie number three. We're going to create a table like this. 
So website number one, rank and style, we're gonna look at the number of links it has going to this page. We're gonna break that down into different buckets. So it has four links in the DR 20 to 30 bucket. It has five links in the 31 to 40 bucket. And then we're gonna do that for sites two and three, eventually come up with an average. So to rank in this niche, on average, these web pages have three, three links in the 20 to 30 bucket and so forth. And then what we'll do is reverse engineer you as well and see how many links you have for the URL you're trying to rank for this keyword and then calculate the difference. This is the link gap. This is how many links you need to build to compete on page one for this keyword. There's some caveats to this. So you do need to consider domain rating, right? If everyone on page one has a huge amount of domain rating, the links that you need to send aren't the same amount of links that they need to send. They have way more authority that they can leverage. So every link that they have is worth more to them, right? So what you need to do is multiply that link gap by a scaling factor. And it's a bit complicated. The, the equation is exponential. The R equation is exponential. This is what we stole from the Atra site. We reverse engineered it to figure out what the equation is and we can figure that out for you. Another caveat is you shouldn't count no follow links because it's not gonna to contribute to the link gap. And then you definitely don't wanna black sheep your site. Again, if everyone on page one is a DR70, for example, and you're a DR20, you're gonna to have to build a lot of links in order to compete with, maybe they're only ranking with five backlinks, but you're gonna to have to build more than that because of the DR difference, right? So you need to make sure you don't black sheep yourself and build too many and overcook your, your, your URL. We're also gonna help you determine your link velocity. So if the people on page one are all building five links per month, you need to build links at such a rate where you'll actually catch them. Like, I mean, even if you close on the link gap, it doesn't matter if these other guys are still building links faster than you and widening the link gap as fast as you're filling it up. So we'll plot out some, some charts, some Monte Carlo charts and help you figure out how many links that you are, what your link velocity should be so you can actually catch these guys. So if you want to sign up for this, super easy. Book a free backlink gap consultation at authority.builders backlink strategy. We'll help you analyze your competition, create a strategy one-on-one -on -one with our SEOs. And this includes a black sheep check for the first 50 people. This one's a little bit time intensive. So if you're interested in the black sheep check or, or any of this stuff, you know, just go ahead and open up a new tab and sign up right now because uh, these, these things fill up and the black sheep we can only do for 50 people. So to set up, it's super, super easy. Just go to that URL. We need your name, your email address so we can get back to you. The URL you wanna rank and the target keyword, we need to know what to reverse engineer. And then use this form to book a half an hour call so we can explain. There's, there's always some questions on how we, we come up with this stuff. So we'll explain how we got to our conclusions and help you so you can do this yourself going forward as well. And what you can expect is you're gonna have an expert's uh, eyes on your site. So the team that I have working on this, these are all SEOs. They all manage their own uh, clients or they have their own portfolios as well. So you're going to have an expert look at your site. We'll help you build a plan based on what's already working in your niche. We're going to reverse engineer page one, just like correlational SEO. We'll see what are the ranking signals that got them to where they are. And then if you should need help executing that plan that we help you come up with, we have a special promotion going on this month only and that's our premier product, ABC Plus, with no setup fees. So typically, ABC Plus is our custom link building campaign where we roll out the link building strategy that we come up with. So if you want help building those links, you can sign up now with zero setup fees. We typically have a $200 setup fee for a new campaign. But until the end of the month, you'll be able to sign up with no setup fee. ABC Plus leverages what I call the vault, which is our best performing link. So we're constantly testing which links, that, which link partners that we work with are giving the best results to our customers. So we look at our customer results and we look at also single variable tests. We often go to the sites where we work with, order links, and then send them to third-party URLs to make sure that they're getting huge ranking increases. So the vault is basically our list of our best links that we've seen perform over time. And ABC Plus, because we get to choose what links that you get, we can hand select them for you to, to leverage these best backlinks. Um, here's some results from ABC Plus. This is affiliate SEO, high ticket affiliate SEO. We can see some of the ranking increases, very steady over time. But if you look at the traffic graph, it's just been about 400% growth, about 4x growth since they signed on. 
And here's local SEO. So a lot of agencies white label our services. Link building is a pain in the butt for scalability. So they just white label to us and they use our reporting to give back to their clients. This is a local SEO client in Nevada. Moved for six to three from six to three in the target keyword and doubled their traffic since coming on. And we also work for e-commerce SEO. So here's a 2,400 search volume keyword and they've moved from nowhere to page one. So they're pretty happy about that. 282% traffic growth. So this stuff works. Definitely works. Subboards from our customers, Mark Valderrama, much love ABC, showing off some of his traffic positions, ranking positions. And Andrew Fiore, ABC Plus always gets the job done. Really appreciate that. Andrew. So if you want to sign up for this thing, so book a free backlink cap consultation, or if you want to sign up for ABC Plus, no setup fee. It's all at the same URL, authority.builders, backlink dash strategy. Just bear in mind, black sheep check only for the first 50 people. So if you want that, go ahead and do that right now. Three more black sheep situations to definitely avoid. The first one is word count, how long you write your articles. SEO, not too long ago, 2019, was simply a matter of if you want to rank for a keyword, you just look at who's written the wrong, longest piece of content and you outdo them. You just write more. SEO now is all about writing the best answer to the query, which means you got to hit the sweet spot. You don't want to underwrite or overwrite. If you're writing for a keyword like Civ 6 Strategy Guide, awesome game. Comment if you play Civ 6. I'm fully addicted to that game. You can't underwrite this. You cannot write a 1,000 word article on how to play Civ 6. It's like the most complicated game in the history of the universe. And at the same time, you can't overwrite for something. If you're trying to rank for Landscaper San Diego, no one needs 4,000 words to explain like what a landscaper does. You just talk about, here's a few client testimonials. We cut the grass, we trim the things and all that. It's done. So you definitely don't want to overwrite it. So how to find your target word count is you can do this manually. You can just look at the top three and average them out. And I like to add 10 to 20%. So I like to outdo the average a little bit. There's some issues doing it manually because you could definitely like miss text that's hidden behind accordions or something, or some people accidentally scoop up text that's in the sidebar or something like that. So what I do is I use a tool like Surfer. What Surfer is going to do is going to look at everything automatically and kind of plot things out for you. And Surfer does a whole bunch of other things too. It's not, not just a word count counting tool. So we're using it anyways and definitely using it for our word count calculations. Here's some case studies with word count. You might've seen this case study before from Matthew Woodward. So he had a situation where he was ranking, I think number third for SEMrush review. And he ran Surfer and he found out like, I'm a black sheep. I'm writing 26,000 words for an article that everyone in the top three of Google is ranked between two and, two and 4,000 words. So I'm the weird guy here. So he deleted 22,000 words and here's his ranking graph. You can see him jump up from number three to number one, right? Here's another one. This is from my website, Diggity Marketing. Um, I typically rank number one for SEO coaching. And what I found was I overcooked my word count. Like something happened on page one where people started ranking with low word count. So I, I got lazy and I just decided I have all these testimonials on the page. Instead, I'm just going to convert these into images. So I'm going to take a, a picture of these testimonials and then just display the image instead of the actual words. And it worked. So you can see that we jumped up back up to number one and we stayed there, right? Um, another black sheep is search intent. Different search queries have different types. You have informational type sort of search queries. So like Donald Trump net worth, if this is really important for you to figure out that you're trying to find out information, this is an informational type keyword. You also have navigational keywords. So I want to try to find something like Zoom login, right? So I'm trying to find something on the internet. Number three would be transactional. I'm trying to buy something. I want a LastPass coupon. So I'm searching for LastPass coupon code. And then lastly, commercial investigations, so best protein powder. I'm trying to learn about a certain product so I can buy it later. So mastering search intent is what you definitely don't want to do is answer a query with the right, wrong type of content. Informational content has a cert, certain format and cert, certain look to it. Commercial type content has another look to it. You do want to deliver the content that matches the intent. That's what it's all about here. And how you do this is looking at what types of pages are ranking. Google is super boring. Like Google simply just ranks the same types of pages over and over again on page one because they don't know 
what is the right answer. They only know it based on what, what they find in common with the pages with the best signals and they put them all together. You can use that to your advantage. So let's take a look, going back to this keyword, best protein powder, right? If we look at positions one, two, and three, and four, these are all listicles. So you can see number one, 17 best protein powders of 2020. They haven't even updated their title tag to, to the current year. So 17 best protein powders, it's a listicle of 17 things. Healthline number two, 11 best. Uh, men's health number number three, 14, and then bodybuilding.com. They don't tell how many are in the listicle, but I guarantee it's a listicle, right? Let's look at positions five and six. These are not listicles. That's a different type of content. What are the best types of protein powder? It's not answering the query of what is the best protein powder. It's, it's a different question that they're, they're, that they're answering. Number six is how to choose the best protein powder for you. Again, different. Google wants to see a listicle, so give them a listicle. That's what search intent is all about. And the last one is lack of local links. This is such a ridiculous picture. I'm sorry for burning your eyeballs out. But uh, we were in a, a niche in Brazil, legal steroid niche. And we were trying to rank a keyword that had 100,000 searches per month. And we found that we were stuck at the bottom of page one. And I think you're getting how I reverse engineer when we're stuck. We started to look at the, the pages at the top of page one and looking at the differences. And what we found is on our backlinks, we didn't have any links from the foreign TLD, so the .br links. We didn't have any .br links. We didn't have any links from uh, pages that are speaking Portuguese and written in Portuguese. That's the only things that we found different. We had superior content, everything else blended in except that. So our solution was, okay, what kind of links will give us .br and be in Portuguese? Well, local citations. So let's try that. Let's see if that works. The result, we just jumped straight to the top of page one in less than 30 days. So that was the thing that messed us up. And then we ran another experiment. So another niche in the weight loss niche, uh, and this is a Spanish website. And so our Spanish website ranked a bunch of different search engines. So in uh, Chile, Mexico, and Peru. So we thought, let's take a look. Let's isolate this out. We'll just get Chilean citations and see, do we increase rankings for just Chile and see if did it not increase anything for anything else. And you can see definitely, look at the pink line, that's the Chilean citations kicking in. This is definitely a black sheep effect too. If you're doing any kind of foreign SEO, you for sure want to uh, look at this kind of thing, for sure, 100%. Cool, um, we made it to the end. So if you guys want to sign up for the free backlink strategy, just make sure to go to authority.builders backlink strategy. We'll do the link app analysis. We'll do the black sheep check for the first 50 people. And if you want to sign up for ABC Plus with zero setup fees, please do. That's on the same URL, and we'll take care of you there. Okay. Brandon says, I have a client using Authority Builders. I was recommended not to build links to the homepage because of the black sheep effect. I found that my client built a bunch of links using Fiverr, really spamming. I disavowed over 200 links. When I start to build links to avoid the black sheep effect, if you disavow them, Brandon, they don't exist anymore to, to, to Google. So they're pretty much out of the consideration. You can build links now if they're truly disavowed. And then you, you have a URL that's, that's underneath the black sheep limit. Going through some of these questions. Sam asks, building links to e-com site, what percent of the links would you send to each page? Homepage, collection category pages, product pages, blog pages. So Sam, this also depends on reverse engineering the competition or reverse engineering for each page that you want to rank, how many links are your competition sending and what category of them there are. That's why we do the link gap analysis so we can look at, at an individual basis. Google ranks web pages, not websites. So you have to look at this in a granular level. That said, you do have another hidden question within here about uh, basically should you spread out links in general? So one thing that I see it's a big pitfall for people is that they only build links to the pages they want to rank. So like their, their category pages or their product pages, then they ignore the homepage. That's another black sheep signal. That's the signal showing that I'm in charge of my link building. I'm not trying to rank the homepage, so I'll never build links to it. But a lot of natural websites in the real world send links to the homepage. It's the, it's the page on a website that gets the most links. So you definitely need to send some links to the homepage. And typically I'd, I'd make that around 40 to 60% of the links. 
Uh, Jennifer asked a great question. Does correlational SEO also work for local by virtue of better organic or you get better local rankings? Interesting question. So the better your organic rankings, the better you'll rank in the map pack. It's, it's a correlated ranking signal. But correlational SEO in general definitely works very well for local. If you look at some of like Kyle Roos case study on rhinoplasty plano, like that's all he did. He reverse engineered the people on page one to the degree that he could fill his content with lorem ipsum content. It was an epic case study. So it definitely works for, for local, 100%. Uh, Chris asks, are you, are you looking at referring domains to the URL itself? Are there any issues that might apply to the domain as a whole? Chris, go ahead and rephrase that question. I'm not sure I understand it. Um, Miklas says, we work in small countries where competitors' landing pages might not have any links. How would you then calculate the RD target? So in a world of, when we're dealing with a small data set, very, very small data set, Google can't apply like statistic algorithms to it. So if you're dealing with a situation where everyone on page one has zero to one links, like that's, that's what Google has been trained to see. So if you 3x the competition by building three links, it's still stat statistically possible. You're just dealing with such small numbers, it doesn't really matter. So you can go ahead, but I definitely wouldn't just try to brute force and send a bazillion links to that page. I would still use reverse siloing. Uh, Nadia asks, what about spammy backlinks? Do they count? They don't count. So this is where a little bit of challenge, and challenge comes into play because Google ignores a lot of backlinks and we don't know which backlinks they ignore. And when you're doing your link gap calculations or black sheep calculations, you have to have some kind of uh, heuristics in place to make sure you're not counting any of the links that Google would ignore. So easy thing to do is make some kind of heuristic, like I'll only look at web pages that are do follow with a DR20 or higher, something like that. Really, really good question. Matt, do you only pick supporting content that has potential to generate organic traffic for, from itself? I love this question because it's, it's actually something that I'm, I'm re-questioning myself. So if you were to ask me two years ago, I'd say I would never write a piece of content unless it had keyword, uh, the potential to rank and pull some kind of search volume. Because I look at any web page on a website, if, it's, if it doesn't have the potential to gain me traffic, then it's only a liability. It can only just become thin someday or not hit the search intent properly or just cause like some kind of like 404 error like someday. It's just a liability. That said, there's a lot of interesting talk about topical maps and topical coverage. And like in order to rank for a keyword like protein powder, you need to talk about every single subtopic related to protein powder. There's a really good case study by this guy named Corey that I recommend checking out. So I'm split right now and I'm, I have websites that are trying to answer every single question under the sun related to a query, even if it has no search volume. And I have some, most of my websites right now are just keyword search volume targeted. So I'll probably have the answer by the end of this year and see like how much fruit the new approach takes. Chris said, did you try 100% exact match? I think you're talking about with the internal links. I have tried exact match. This is like back in 2016 when I was a dummy SEO. And basically what I did was I had an affiliate website trying to rank for best ergonomic chairs. And it was right before the holidays, right before the big like uh, Black Friday rush. So I decided to review like 50 more chairs and got a whole bunch of content written. And then all of these supporting content pieces, I would link back to my pillar piece, best ergonomic chairs and link back with the exact match at Anchor Tech's best ergonomic chairs. And I tanked my web page right before Black Friday. It completely just destroyed my web page. So you can definitely overcook exact, exact, exact match Anchor Tech. That's why I never repeat Anchor Tech internally. Talia said, I'm already an ABC member. I'd like more information on the breakdown of my URL. Should I book a call still? Yeah, you definitely have. When you, when you sign on with ABC+, Plus, you definitely get your own account manager, and they're here for you. They are definitely there for you, for anything. John, oh my God, I used to play Civ until my eyes were burning. Wish I spent that much more time learning SEO. There's a reason why Civ has the motto, just one more turn. Uh, Corey, who's on this call, he's, we played multiplayer together. And we're both addicted. Jeremy, does word count include comments? It doesn't. 
To add on to Jeremy's questions, I would also wonder if reviews for product pages would overcook word count. It just depends. So what matters is in the body of the article. So like be above the header, below the footer, and not in a comment section. So if the review is embedded in the body, that would count towards word count. Miklas asks, Miklas, you're on fire. Your questions are really good. Worried that doing too much informational content to use for supporting siloing will ruin the relevance we have on review best keywords. What do you think? Well, since the December 2020 update, they actually started dinging websites that had too much review or best keywords. And the web pages that were rewarded had a crap ton of informational type content. We're talking about ratios that are 60% or higher informational as, as opposed to commercial. And then on the other side of the coin, you have sites like uh, you know, Gear Hungry that just got completely decimated. I did a review of Gear Hungry on my YouTube channel, so definitely check that out. And they had, you know, like we're looking at 80 to 90% more of commercial content. So you definitely won't mess yourself up. Chris asked a question about the disavow, and I called him Chris Aval. Chris Aval, is disavow an appropriate way to remove links if there's too many? Like, yeah, the, the disavow tool, like a lot of people think, like if I use it, Google thinks I'm a naughty boy and they, they, they put me on the naughty list. It's not like, like that at all. Um, it's a very, very automated tool. And if you can't, remove links manually, which is better. You can just use the disavow tool. Sam says, say I want to focus on a product category, e.g. blue shoes online. I have several supporting content pieces on the site. Internal link those to the money page, blue shoes online, then internal link them to each other. Then do I build loads of backlinks to these supporting pages or also to the money page as well and what portion to each? So the portion, Sam, is based on finding your black sheep maximum. So that's how many links and look at your link gap as well and make sure you're sending enough links to each page in order to compete with the competition. That's, it's not about a generic proportion that you can always apply to a configuration on any single website. It's always about looking at the link gap for the URL. Google ranks URLs, not websites. John said, how long does it take to see results on ABC Plus? Here's your generic SEO answer, it just depends. Typically, when we single variable test backlinks, like just create a vacuum and send a backlink from one website to another, it typically takes about 21 to 28 days for the backlink to kick in. So if, if your website needs backlinks and we send backlinks, you should look for results around that point in time. And there's outliers as well. Sometimes you get results in seven days. Sometimes it takes you know, 30, 45 days. MBN asks, was your website what weight loss site content in Spanish? Yes, it was. Uh, what are the steps that you take to reverse engineer your site on why it's stuck? Victoria, it's a super good question. It's just a really, really, really big, big thing to take a look at because Google has over 200 ranking factors and any single one of them could be the issue that's holding you back. That's why we have the motto, do all the things in the affiliate lab. It's just, that's what it takes to win at SEO these days is doing all the things. And when you're doing an audit, you need to look at all the things. Saeed, is it worth building tier two links anymore? Yes, I build them all the time. What if we want to increase the overall traffic and site authority, not just a particular page? Website is 125 posts and gets about 12K in traffic. Interesting question. If you're talking about ABC Plus, we have a, a, a different type of plan. We call it the authority plan, where instead of focusing on a page, we'll send links to your entire site in a thought out in a thought out manner and make sure not to overcook and send links to the right supporting pages. So that's also a plan too. Zaid, so I have a main article, no backlinks, and six supporting articles, no backlinks. I found that one of my supporting articles ranked in the second page instead of the main article. What to do here? Okay, first off, you want to look at your supporting article and make sure it's not, it's on-site SEO isn't super optimized for that same keyword. So if there's, if there's a portion of that keyword, like a single word of it that should just be on the main page and not the secondary page, get it off of the secondary page if you can. And then next is when all the pages don't have any link equity, the, Google doesn't really know. They're all the same to them. So what you should do is build some links to the main article. Once it has authority, it'll start edging out in, in front of the competing pages that you don't want to win for that keyword. GERD, if you have too many links to a page, can you copy the content, create a new page with the copy content, use the original URL uh, page with new supporting content? Yeah, but... The problem is you're starting from ground zero here. You'd probably want to 301 redirect the old page to new page, and then you would simply create the black sheep effect again. 
But if you're okay and just straight up starting over and then all the links that are going to the original page are going to 404 and not give you any value, like that, that could work if you want to do this. It's just not very efficient. It would probably make your eyes bleed to do it. Peter, how important is the relevance of a backlink to your website, uh, e.g. a rental property website, having a backlink to a local uh, restaurant or unrelated business in a different country? Relevance is important. Almost, this is hard to say because I see examples of links with zero relevance ranking websites all the time. Um, authority is more important than, relevant, than relevance. But what I believe relevance is going on, what's going on with relevance is that if you have too many irrelevant links, that can be a negative ranking factor. But I mean, the crazy thing is if, if I get a link from the New York Times uh, in an article about HR, then it's not going to hurt Diggity Marketing at all. Right? It's, still, it's still definitely going to give it a huge boost. Think about lack of relevance being a negative ranking factor. In mass, in mass, you can definitely sprinkle in irrelevant links. Um, Mike, do you think Google will soon move away from counting backlinks in their algorithm, or will their algorithm be more targeted to more on-page SEO techniques, page experience, web vitals, all that stuff, et cetera? Mike, I think in a perfect world, that's what Google or any search engine would want to do. Like, if I'm Googling best meatloaf recipe, why should I want a search engine to serve me up an article that has anything other than the content in mind? I want to, I want to know about meatloaf, not about meatloaf recipes with backlinks, like that's, that's not what the user wants. But it's not easy, right? Let's say, for example, the, the best meatloaf is this uh, one made, made by uh, Aunt Jemima or whatever, and it's got a certain portion of meat and tomato sauce and whatever. And let's say that gets copied 100 times because it's the best meatloaf. How does Google differentiate which one is, which one is the best article? They have to look at external signals like backlinks. They're also very married to the page rank algorithm. And I don't think they're going to shake it in the next decade. Miklas, how do you decide which questions get answered in the pillar article and which goes to, into separate supporting articles? That's a really good question as well. You need to look at the other content ranked on page one and see, okay, I have this very tiny question about protein powder, like does protein powder retain water or cause water weight um, issues? Does that belong on my best protein powder page or protein powder side effects page? You're going to have to look on the web pages already ranking and see where they put it. I've got a couple more questions that I can answer here. Sam, do you send tier two links to guest posts which point to your money site? If so, how many? Uh, off the record, because I have a service, um, Authority Builders, which delivers guest posts and outreach links, I would never say in general to send tier two backlinks to any one of the partners that we work with that offer their websites to create links for our customers. But I'm definitely not gonna say that. That said, I do build tier two PBM links um, on different kinds of websites so you can take that for what you will. Uh, Steve, do you have any thoughts about using expired domain to launch a new site and how to avoid the black sheep scenario? I don't think that they're too related, but expired domains launch new websites I don't do this too often because most of the time when I'm starting a new website, just to buy an existing domain that's already ranking, take it off someone else's hands. But that said, I am uh, launching a website right now in a niche that I'm very, very excited to get into. And um, yeah, and we'll let you know how it goes. Last question I'm going to answer is from Chris. Any comment on the review update? Go to my YouTube channel and search for Google product review update. Um, you can just Google Google product review update, and you'll probably see my video, video coming up, number one. I, I did a really big analysis on this. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for sticking around, and I really appreciate your time. I hope you got some value out of this, and remember, if you want to sign up for that free backlink strategy, authority.builders, backlink-strategy, and then get in on ABC Plus with zero set of fees. That's 200 bucks off. Thank you. Thank you so much, and take care. Have an awesome day.